Hi, I'm Ling, and today I'm going to show you the tools I use for leather crafting. This card wallet is the first project I made, and I was using some really terrible tools. The whole experience and the outcome, as you can see, was just a complete struggle, but it did make me realize the importance of having the right tools. After doing a ton of research on tools, I figured out exactly what I needed to set myself up for successful projects without breaking the bank. So I've got my leather working tool bag here, and I'm just gonna jump right in and share the tools that I use in the order that I use them. The first thing you're gonna need is some sort of cutting mat. These are the ones that I use. Um, they're just different sizes, and then this one also rotates, which is pretty handy. I also have a much bigger one. This one is 18 by 36 inches. It really just depends on what your workspace looks like and the size of the projects that you're gonna be working on. You can get these at any craft store. Amazon also has a really good selection, and they range in price from $20 to $100, depending on the size and the brand. The next thing you're gonna need to cut your leather is some sort of knife. I have a few knives that I use. The one I use the most is this rotary cutter. Um, it's a 45 millimeter rotary cutter and the brand is Alpha. These range in price from 10 to $40 and they're available at any craft store. They're also available on Amazon. I would say this is a must have. I use this to cut literally everything. The other knife I use is an X-Acto knife. I have two here. Um, there's not really anything special about these. You're just gonna wanna find something that's very sharp. These are great for doing any sort of detailed cut. You can see in my first project here, I was just using the rotary cutter, so I overcut this inside corner, and that's somewhere that I really could have used an X-Acto knife. The other type of knife that could be worth investing in is a skiving knife. They look like this or like this. These are just two different formats. This one is meant to be pulled, and this one is more of a pushing action. You'd use this if you're working with thicker leather that you need to thin down if you're planning on folding or stacking multiple layers together. I don't think this is absolutely necessary, but again, it just depends on what kind of projects you're gonna get into. The next tool I would recommend is a ruler board that is clear and pretty big. Mine is from Ulfa, it's six by 12 inches. I tried using just a regular ruler that wasn't clear, and I didn't have the same confidence when it came to cutting because I felt like I couldn't see what I was cutting. These are pretty cheap too. I think mine was $16 and I got it from Amazon. Once you have all of your pieces cut up, the next thing you're gonna need is some sort of tape or glue to hold them together. I know a lot of people like using glue, but for me, my preference is to just use double-sided tape. The reason I like double-sided tape is because it's very clean, there's no mess, it's tacky immediately so you don't have to wait, and I also like it because if you put your pieces together in a way that you're not happy with, you can easily just rearrange it and it keeps that tack. I got mine from a dollar store. I actually bought out the entire dollar store because I like this stuff so much, but you can also get it from Amazon or pretty much anywhere else. Now that your pieces are stuck together, the next tool that you're gonna wanna use is a wing divider. This is the one I use. Wing dividers are really great for marking out your stitching line. Um, it'll give you that nice consistent distance from the edge. If I have a design that has a series of holes that need to be the same distance away from each other, the wing divider is really handy for that. Wing dividers should be around $10 to $20 and you can find them on Amazon. The next tool is in all. It's a very simple looking tool but it's super versatile. I use it for undoing stitches without ripping them, punching holes that are hard to reach, and they're also really great for making marks on your leather. The one I have was a hand-me-down from my mom, but you can find them on Amazon or any craft or hardware store, and they should be around five to $10. The next thing you're gonna need is a pricking iron. Pricking irons kind of look like forks, and what they do is they make those stitching holes for you in the leather so that these holes exist when you're ready to stitch them. This was the original pricking iron that I bought, and this thing is terrible. The only way I was able to get it to work was by asking my mom to help me and I would hold it down and she would use all of her force to hammer it in. And even then, it was just way too blunt to really make any sort of hole in the leather. This was the point at which I realized it's very important to have the right tools. So I did a ton of research and I came across this man named Nigel Armitage and he has the most extensive document that reviews every single pricking iron that is out there. And on top of that, for every iron, he has an individual YouTube review. The price range for these pricking irons is huge. It's anywhere from 10 to $300. And because of my bad experience with this first pricking iron, I was so ready to put down at least $100. But after going through Nigel's document, I settled on these ones. They're $15 each, and they're from a brand called Sewa. I have the 6x4 and the 2x4, and I would highly recommend getting both sizes. 
I got mine from goodsjapan.com. Next, to prick out those holes in your leather, you're gonna need some sort of hammer or mallet. This is the one I use. I got it from Amazon and it was $12. Pretty much any hammer will do. The only thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that the head is rubber. A metal head will just ruin your other tools and you don't want that to happen. The other thing you're gonna need for stitching is some sort of board to hammer into. This is the one that I use. I got it from Amazon and I think it was around $15. Before I got this one from Amazon, I was just using this old cutting board, which works pretty well too. All right, let's talk about needles. These are the needles I use. They're pretty basic and also pretty inexpensive. I would recommend the John James harness needles. And I think they range from two to $10, depending on the size and the quantity. The minimum quantity you're gonna wanna get is two because that's how much you need to do a saddle stitch. Next is thread. I got this from Amazon. It was $10 for 260 yards. And the thickness I use is one millimeter thick. And this is a polyester thread. The next thing I'm gonna show you, I would say is optional, but highly recommended, and it is this stitching pony. I got this one from Dream Factory. It was $100 for the medium pony, which is a lot more expensive than other stitching ponies that you'll find on the market, but I think it's worth it because it looks so nice. I think the design of the stitching pony is super smart. I love how compact it is and how the table clamp just folds in like this. It's not totally necessary at first. I did my first few projects without it when I was waiting for it to come in the mail. But if leatherworking is something that you're seriously thinking of getting into, I would highly recommend it because it just makes the entire stitching process way more ergonomic. When you're done stitching, you're gonna need a lighter to finish off your stitch and make sure that the stitch doesn't unravel. This is the one I use, I just got it for free. I know a lot of people also like using a thread zapper, which is cool, but I'm cheap and this one works perfectly well. This next tool is also not a must have, but it is something that I use pretty frequently and it's this hole punch set. I got this set of six hole punches from Amazon for less than $10 and they work extremely well. All right, let's talk about some edge finishing tools. The first tool you're gonna use to finish off your edge is called an edge beveler. It just takes off the tiniest amount of leather from your edges and makes them look cleaner. The brand of my edge beveler is Kyoshin L, which I got from goodsjapan.com, but you can find them on Amazon and I think they should range from $10 to $30. I would say this tool is also a nice to have. It's not absolutely necessary, but if you are going to be serious and you want your edges to look clean, you should pick up an edge beveler. Once you have your edges beveled, the next thing you're going to need is Tolkienol and a wood slicker. Tolkienol is a burnishing gum and it has a glue-like consistency. What it does is it makes your raw edges look a lot more shiny and polished. So you'll apply this onto the edge and slick them on with the wood slicker until you get that shiny look. I got the Tolkienol from Amazon and it was $14. I've tried some other brands too, but they don't even compare. Everybody swears by Tolkienol and I totally understand why. Nothing really special about the wood slicker. I got it from Amazon and it was $10. Check out how much better the card wallet on the right turned out when I remade it using the proper tools. Here's a list I put together that summarizes the must-have tools to get started in leatherworking. For a relatively small investment of $123, you'll be well on your way to making a wallet, bag, belt, or really whatever you can dream up, which is why I love this hobby. I also like that it's both creative and practical. You might notice that I listed the leather as $0. That's because I've recently been working on leather that I salvaged from abandoned couches. It's something you can do too if you have an old jacket, couch, or bag lying around that you don't use anymore. It'll save you a lot of money and you'll be less afraid of making mistakes. I recently made a bike bag out of an old couch. I'll link that video in the cards if you want to check it out. If your first few projects go well and you're willing to spend more money, you can buy all the tools I mentioned for $259 and take your hobby to the next level. All right guys, there you have it. Those are all the tools that I use for my leatherworking projects. I'll make sure to list and link everything down below. Thanks for watching.